How are y'all doing today, this morning? That is awesome. You know, it's just excited that one day we will be able to stand before our Father in heaven knowing that Jesus has paid it all. Man, if that doesn't get you excited here today, I don't know what will. But man, I just, I've been blessed this service. I hope you have been blessed. Can you give one more round of applause for just all the students that came together this morning? Man, I'm just, they did an awesome job. They have gone uh, over and beyond just, the, the, uh, just with everything, and it's just, I'm just so, I'm just so blessed uh, to, to be their youth pastor, and um, I'm excited that I get to bring the message uh, to you on this youth Sunday. Uh, just a couple of things, just uh, remember to uh, keep the pulses in prayer. They're still in quarantine. They're tuning in with us live. It's uh, good to have y'all here this morning. We miss you. We love you, and we can't wait. For, for y'all to be with us here uh, again, so just, uh, again, just keep them in your prayers. Do you know, man, it's like, it's like three months till Christmas. Can you, is that right, three months? Yeah, it's about three months. I just can't wrap my mind around that. Soon, like in a couple of weeks, they'll be playing like all the Christmas movies. And I, I, I like Christmas movies, don't, don't get me wrong. I just don't really like, like the cheesy ones, like the Hallmark ones where like the lawyer comes to the small town and find Santa Claus's daughter, and it's like just like on repeat every single one, it's like finding Christmas, or, and I really want to watch A Wonderful Life, but they need to like edit it down to where it's not like eight hours long, and because it kind of makes you feel depressed the first three hours and stuff, so like I like Christmas movies, but you know what my favorite Christmas movie ever is? I bet y'all won't know what it is. Die Hard? Die Hard? No, it's not Die Hard. My favorite Christmas movie is Steven Spielberg Gremlins. Have y'all ever seen Gremlins? That is a Christmas movie. It takes place at Christmas time. I love Gremlins. I was at, um, <laughs> there's a point to this. I was at kids camp this summer with uh, the little, littler ones, and I was reminded how much of kids camp reminds me of Gremlins. Uh, no, don't. I, I, some of y'all have kids. I, I really do. I, I, I love your kids, but hear me out. Like, I was sitting there at like 2 in the morning, and my mom was just making all these connections to this movie. And if you ever seen the movie Gremlins, uh, a dad comes home from um, doing some business, and he brings home his son, like this little fuzzy thing. It's called a mogwai. And the mogwai has like three rules with it, and you cannot break these rules or everything just goes nuts. And the first rule is do not expose the mogwai to light. It will kill it. Have you ever put a little kid out in the sunlight in the middle of July without sunscreen? Man, they burn up, and they're screaming, they're crying, and you told them to put sunscreen on, and they didn't put sunscreen on because they didn't like the feel of sunscreen, so now you got to rub aloe on them, and they're screaming and all that stuff, so... Also, it says, you know, do not let them come contact with water. It will multiply. Have you ever put kids around water? For some reason, it seems like for one minute, they're over by the water slide, and another second, they're on top of a building, and you're wondering how they get from point A to point B. They're just, like, everywhere at the same moment, and it feels like you only have 10, but it feels like you have 100 of them, and they're just all running around just like madness. And lastly, the rule is you never, ever... Feed a mogwai after midnight. I was in my cabin, and this uh, we had we were um, overbooked, so I'd actually stay in another cabin with another church. I'll sleep on the couch, and literally it was like twelve fifteen, and they had this thing called canteen where you know like third graders and sixth grade all the way up to sixth grade can get like Mountain Dew and Pop Rocks and. Have you ever given kids sugar after midnight? I had this little kid, and I, he's not even at our church. I remember his name. His name was Bryce, and I'm getting ready for bread. And he runs up, and he rips open Pop Rocks on top of me, and they just pour. And he shoves them to his mouth, and he drinks two Mountain Dews at one time and goes, Wah! and just, like, takes off, and just he's like, and he slams the door. And then uh, I hear one of the counselors say, Bryce, where are your clothes at? He goes, I'm free, I'm free, like, literally. <laughs> If you feed kids, little kids, after midnight, they turn into gremlins. And anyway, uh, Danny needs help in children's ministry, so if you're ready to do that, I'm just kidding. But I, I love, I do, I love helping out with children's ministry. I think it's awesome. I'm definitely not called to it, but we are so blessed here to have Matt and Dana who are called to that, and they do just a, a great job with that. I love student ministry. Student ministry is my passion. And I'm just so blessed that I'm able to be the student pastor here 
You know, for our students, these past 18 months have not been easy on them. It's been really rough. A lot of them have lost a lot of things they've been waiting for their whole life, like homecoming and prom, graduations, not being able to see their friends for years. They're locked up inside of a house. And through that, you have can't imagine the anxiety problems that many students have developed. But I want to say, through all of that, even though it has been difficult, the spiritual growth that has taken place in their lives is incredible. You know, church, just because they are youth, just because they are young, do not think that God is not using them in great ways, because he is. And today... I want us to focus on two second sections of Scripture. So if you have your Bibles, we'll be in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 9 through 10. Then here in a little bit, we'll skip on over to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. But we'll start over in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, 9 through 10. And this is near the end of the book of Ecclesiastes. Uh, Solomon has concluded throughout this book that it is better to follow God's wisdom than the ways of the world. You see, Solomon, in his younger age, he wasted his youth. He chased after things that didn't matter. He built an empire that didn't matter. He chased after every worldly desire. He was probably, uh, he's probably one, of the, one of the richest men to ever live. And after gaining everything, he says it was all in vain, that it was vanity. Vanity means, you know, something that disappears quickly, that once is here, that is gone. And at the end of the book of Ecclesiastes, looking at chapter 11, 9, 9 through 10, he takes two sections, two verses, to focus in on youth. And he says in verse 9, Rejoice! O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes. But know that for all of these, God will bring you into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. This is the reading of the word of God. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your scripture. God, as we just take this time just to review your word, God, I just pray that you speak to us, speak to this congregation. God, I just pray that you will just transform lives today. You will transform mindsets. God, I just pray if there's someone here today that doesn't know Jesus as their Savior, that they will come to know him. God, we thank you for for everything that you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So in this passage of Scripture... Solomon zeroes in on youth. And this is what he instructs. Solomon instructs them to take advantage of being young before it comes to an end. He was not suggesting that young people do not have any problems, nor was he suggesting that older people have no joys. He is simply making a generalization that that youth, is a time for enjoyment. Youth, enjoy the time that God has given you. Enjoy it before the problems of older age begin to reveal themselves to you. In this precious time that you have been given, students, it's so important, watch your heart. Guard your heart. Watch your eyes. Be careful for what they seek. Because both of them can lead you into destruction. Solomon says, walk in the ways of your heart. You know, it's not an encouragement to go on a youthful fling to satisfy a sinful desire. No, it is rather a reminder for young people to enjoy the special pleasures that belong to youth that can never again be experienced in quite the same way. One of my favorite things uh, when I was in high school, 
I love going to uh, pep rallies. I, know, I feel like all of us have been here to a pep rally before where you just get to go crazy. It just didn't matter. It was just like an hour of just mass chaos. You're just hanging out with your friends. You're, you're representing your, uh, your school. You're having a great time. And soon coming up, you know, uh, then you had the Saturday, uh, Friday night football games. Man, Friday night lights, they were just an awesome. Whether you were playing on the field or whether you were in the student section, it was just a great time to experience. And one of the things is that Sadden, you know, in your older age, when you return to Friday night lights, it doesn't hit the same. You just basically have memories of once of things that once were. Students, enjoy these brief moments that you have given, even these little moments, before soon they will pass away and never can be relived the same. You know, those of us that are here today, older congregation, need to remember that God expects young people to act like young people. But with that, privilege must be balanced with personal responsibility. What Solomon's saying, enjoy this time that God has given you, but be responsible with it. He says in verse 10, it says, therefore remove sorrow from your heart and put away evil from your flesh for childhood and youth are vanity. Young people must put anxi- pull anxiety out of their hearts. The word sorrow means inner pain or anxiety. And if we are living in the will of God, we will have the peace of God in our hearts. And if you're living outside of the will of God, if you're living for your sinful desires, the only thing it can do is destroy the body and bring destruction. Students, you're living in a culture right now, you're living in a society that says there is no responsibility for your actions. Do what feels right. Experiment. Try new things. If it feels right, do it. You know, even though society might say that you do, there will be no responsibility to your actions, there will be. Many of us that are here older probably have done some stupid things back in our youth. And sometimes the choices that you make carry on into adulthood. Some people say, you know, it stays, you know, what happens as a teenager will stay in those years. That's not true. See, right now you are projecting yourself down whatever path in life that you are going to take. And are you being responsible with the time that has been given? Parents, are you being a parent? We have too many parents right now out in this world that want to be the kid's best friend. They want to be their best pal. That's not what students need. You know, many people want to blame this generation on how uh, these kids are acting, but it comes back to... How were they raised? Were they raised in a home where mom and dad wanted to be their best friend and not their parents? Be a parent. Don't be their best friend. They need instruction in this time. They need a a godly man in the house. Are you being a father right now, uh, setting that example in your home? Are you spending that time with your devotion? Women, are you being that godly mother in your home? Are you being that godly example? If you're not being that example in the home, then what example do they have? Be responsible, students, with this time that you have been given. For childhood and youth are vanity. And when Solomon says vanity throughout these scriptures, sometimes he thinks of things that are pointless. Sometimes he says things that are meaningless. But right here is a special case when he says for childhood and youth are vanity. What he means right here is that it will come and soon go. These precious years that you have go by so quickly and you must not waste your opportunity with it right now. Prepare yourself for the future. You know, the Hebrew word uh, translated for youth in this passage means the dawning. Youth is indeed a time of dawning. Before you know it, the sun will set on it. Therefore, make the most of your dawning years because you will never see them again. 
Charles Spurgeon once said, Youthful sins lay a foundation for aged sorrow. And he's right. And so what Solomon is telling y'all with this time that you have, don't be an idiot. Don't be a fool. Because whatever you are sowing right now, whatever foundation you are laying, you will one day have to answer to those things. And some of those things can last a lifetime. And church, just because they are youth, don't treat them like they're idiots. If you have your Bibles with you, let's flip on over to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. And it says in 1 Timothy 4.12, it says this. Paul, speaking to Timothy, who is at Ephesus, he says, Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in the world in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. See, right now, Paul is counseling Timothy not to let anyone despise him of his youthful age. You know, though Timothy was young, he had demonstrated profound faithfulness, and that church is the key. It is hard to disregard someone for their youth when their character and their conduct are impeccable. Therefore, he needed to serve the church to serve an example of the believer in these ways, in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Church, Teaching the truth is not enough. Let me say that again. Church, teaching the truth is not enough. Church leaders must model the truth that they teach. Don't expect, don't have expectations of a younger generation to set the example, but you as an older generation must set it. You must set it in your speech. This implies that our speech should always be honest and loving. The way you talk, the way you say things, be truthful, but do things in a loving way. You must set the example in conduct. This means not to talk the talk, but also walk the walk. Your lives should be controlled by the word of God. We must not be like the hypocrites that Paul was talking, described to Titus. In Titus 1, 16, he says this, They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. You know, they were, you know, the things that they were saying, the things that the church, uh, they were professing did not match up with the life that they were living. Don't talk about being a servant. Don't talk about how we need servants in the church, but it's time to step up and be the servant. We don't come here to be served, but we come here to serve. Stop waiting to be served and start serving. Be that example. You must set the example in love. What is the motivation behind your service? In love points, you know, in love points to the motivation in our lives. When we do not obey God, you know, we do not obey God to be applauded by men, but we obey God because we love God and we love his people. And is that demonstrated in your life? Is that shown in your service? You must be the example in faith. This implies that we trust God and are faithful to him. Faith and love often go together. Faith always leads to faithfulness. You must be an example in purity. Purity is important as we live in the presence of this evil world. You know, Ephesus where Timothy was preaching, you know, it was a city, uh, a center for a sexual impurity. And young Timothy was faced with great temptation. He had to have his body under control. He had to keep himself pure in mind, heart and body. Students, this is so important. Keep yourself pure. Even though you have a world that is telling you different, they do not know the, you do not know the bondage that it will bring. 
no matter what they say, no matter what they try to define as truth, an impure life will bring a bondage like no other. That's why Solomon speaks so much of it in Proverbs, because that sin will bring a bondage that can last a lifetime. Keep yourself pure. Keep your mind sober. Focus on heavenly things, and this goes to the church as well. Church, keep your motives pure. Keep your heart pure. Focus on heavenly things. Are we as leaders and adults in the church, are we setting the example for this next generation? Now, this is what we are striving for in our student ministry. We as Christians have fixed our hope in the living God, but the lost have no hope and they do not know the living God. All they may, all that the, many of them know is that their dead idols cannot save them. Students, this world cannot save you. The things of this world cannot save you. Yes, they might bring a moment of pleasure, but they do not bring salvation. Paul reminds Timothy that Jesus is the Savior of all men. There is a lost and dying world that needs to see Christ. And if we cannot embody the Christian example within the walls of the, this church, how can we expect to reach a lost world? Students, just because you have been blessed with this precious time of being a youth, don't be an idiot with it. Church, just because they're young, don't treat them like an idiot. God is doing great things within our student ministry. And are you ready to be the example to them? The band's going to make their way back up here on stage to close us with worship today. And maybe somewhere in your life right now, maybe you're not being the best example in the home, parents. Maybe you've made a few mistakes. That's okay. Learn from them. Be that godly mom. Be that godly husband. Students, you do not know everything. You might seem like you do. You, see, you might seem like you have a full understanding of how everything works, but you don't. Take heed to your parents' advice. Listen to them because they speak from experience. And sometimes they do not want you to make the same choices that they did. In this precious time that will soon fade away, enjoy what God has given to, given to you, but be responsible with it because if you're irresponsible, it will bring a lifetime of baggage with you. Church, pray for our students. Many are faced with problems that you would never expect. Pray for them. Maybe you're here today and you have never placed your trust in Jesus Christ. No matter how much sorrow you did in your youth, Jesus can set you free from it. He loved you so much that he paid that price. That he placed it upon himself. And because Jesus did that, death was arrested forever. And have you put your trust and faith in Jesus Christ? The altars will soon be open. Maybe you just need to spend some time here just talking to God. Maybe you need to make some things right. Maybe you're carrying a lot of extra weight in your life. Maybe it's time to leave it here at the altar. And enjoy the freedom that you have in Christ. Maybe someone in here today has never placed their faith in Jesus. Don't walk out these doors today not knowing him. And man, as we enter this time of worship, as we enter this time of praising God, man, just worship him. Worship God. Life 
is brief. But we have eternity with Jesus Christ. Dearly Father God, we just thank you for the time that we've had here today. God, I just pray in this, in this moment of worship that you just move your Holy Spirit amongst us, God. Lord, that you just will be close to the brokenhearted. Lord, I pray today if there's someone carrying around some baggage or weight, God, that they can leave it here at the altar and walk away not carrying it anymore. God, we pray over our students. Lord, we just ask for a, a special protection around them as they go out into a, a very evil world, a dark world. But God, we pray that there'll be a light of Christ to others. Lord, if there's someone here today that has never surrendered their life to you, God, I pray that you're working on their heart right now. God, we just give this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. We pray. Amen.